So now that we've talked about the overall structure of the lock manager case study, the new one, the asynchronous one, let's focus on the server part in particular. And this, of course, will show the relationship between the controller and the service to handle these requests asynchronously. At first, it looks very similar. We've got a lock manager, no surprise there. We've got a REST controller annotation, no surprise there. We've got an auto-wired service, no surprise there. This should start to be kind of paint by numbers at this point. It always looks exactly the same. Uh, but then we get into more interesting things. So these are now the methods that are defined, the endpoint handler methods defined using the spring annotations. So we have the same method names we had before, create a couple of acquire methods, a couple of release methods. But the return values are very different. So you can see here when we create something, we get back a mono to a Boolean. When we acquire uh, a lock, we get back, that should actually be a, a, a mono to a lock. I guess it could be a flux, but we're just getting one back. Um, when we acquire multiple items, we get back a flux to a lock because you could get multiple uh, locks coming back. And then when we release the uh, locks, we get back a mono to a Boolean. And what this allows us to do is it allows the client and the server to be fully asynchronous. There doesn't have to be any blocking involved. You just do the call and you get back a, a, a mono or a flux and, and you go on your merry way until you actually need to get the values. As before, we use post mapping and get mapping. That really hasn't changed. As before, we need path names to identify the endpoint handler methods. That really hasn't changed. And we also have the various annotations to say we want to take requests uh, that are coming out of the HTTP request and converting them into Java objects. That hasn't changed. Really, the only thing that's changed is the use of reactive types as the return values. And of course, that then translates into a different implementation model, different implementation strategy for the lock manager service, which again starts out looking very much like we did before. The difference being, however, we don't have our own private executor anymore. We're going to leverage the Bean facility in Spring to have the incoming threads automatically mapped to virtual threads, or the incoming requests mapped to virtual threads. We annotate this with a service, and then we use our array blocking queue to limit access to the available locks. And remember, the way that array blocking queue works in a nutshell is it's got three methods that matter for our purposes. It has a method called poll, which will check to see if there's a lock available atomically and return the lock if there is. Otherwise, it returns null. So it's a non-blocking operation. And we use that very heavily in this implementation. There's also a take method, which blocks. We don't use take in this implementation at all because we don't want to end up uh, blocking stuff. Wait, I take that back. We do, we do use take for one thing. Um, and then there's also one called offer, where you give it a lock and it puts it back into the array blocking queue, again, without blocking. And uh, as long as the client follows the protocol, then you can use offer and all will be well. Here are the methods that we've got. Again, we've got create, acquire, acquire, release, and release, and they return these, these reactive types. And we're going to see some really clever implementations in a second when we get to the next part of this lesson that show how to use some advanced features coming out of, of uh, Project Reactor in order to do all of this stuff. And it's really, uh, really interesting to take a look at. So that's the end of the walkthrough of the server structure and functionality. Just to reiterate, the overall design is very similar. The architecture is essentially the same. Just we're changing the return types so we can do things asynchronously, number one. And number two, we're using reactive programming in order to implement the lock manager service.